what's up guys? Coach Bobby. Welcome back to my 45 until 45 series. Going to go over a Tuesday, a typical Tuesday schedule today. So as I went over on the Monday schedule, uh, I talked about the importance of having a routine and building habits around nutrition and around fitness. That's imperative because we cannot go out into the world hoping that things turn out right. Right, everything for the most part is set up against us, right? As far as uh, nutrition and exercise, so if we don't have a a plan or a strategy in place that allows us to succeed, we will not succeed. So it's important to have systems, if you will, in place to make sure that we stick to or adhere to a schedule and a routine, and that becomes habit over time. All right, so Monday, I told you about my fitness and my workout schedule. Monday. Wednesday, Friday are my standard workout days, right? So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday I work out. And then I add a Saturday or Sunday bonus day, right? That one's not typically as intense or even important, as important as the other ones, uh, but I typically get something in on a Saturday or Sunday uh, with or without my boot camp class. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, plus an additional Saturday or Sunday bonus class or bonus workout is what I do, right? That's important because that sets up the entire week in terms of when I want to build muscle and when I want to burn fat, right? It's, it's very difficult to just wing it, right? So you have to know which days you're going to allow yourself to have more nutrients, more fuel, um, and, and more carbohydrates if necessary, and when you're going to allow yourself to fast longer and, and be more inactive to allow your body time uh, to burn fat, right? So it's important to know when those days line up. So for me, again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday or Sunday are my workout days. So Monday, I talked about uh, my schedule. I work out, uh, I, I, do, I, I fast a little bit every day. Uh, I work out and then I allow myself, if I'm craving something to eat carbohydrate-wise, I allow myself to do that on a workout day, right? And hopefully within the workout window uh, to do two things, to, to basically stave off any um, temptations I have for carbohydrates and keep those at bay. But there is some benefit to having carbohydrates around a workout as well. So if you do it, if you train hard enough and you have the, the insulin response that carbohydrates uh, elicit that can actually aid in transport of amino acids. It's a protein uh, synthesizer, so it helps your body use uh, the protein and the amino acids that uh, that that protein breaks down into. Uh, insulin helps your body transport that to the necessary places. In this case, your muscles uh, to do what it needs to do to repair and rebuild muscle. So there are some benefits actually to having uh, carbohydrates around the time that you work out. All right, so. Uh, but more importantly, from a standpoint of trying to lose weight, we're trying to build habits, right? So we want to make sure that we don't go on this 30-day or 60-day plan where we're going no carbs and then come back in a month or two and, and go back to where we were. We're trying to permanently uh, decrease our carbohydrate intake to a level that allows us continuously to get into fat-burning mode. And we can only do that by building habits. And habits can be built... Uh, incrementally only. You can't do it drastically. You can't do extreme measures. Uh, you're best suited and best and, 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 and your best odds for success are if you do it incrementally. So because of that, I suggest people move toward uh, lower carb diets by at first moving all the carbohydrate intake to days you train, right? And then eventually to the windows, the, the small windows around when you train, and then eventually you can get to a point where you don't need carbohydrates on, on every training day even. So you can have, you know, you, you can rely on them, uh, rely on training days just to have the carbs that you know you're going to crave and not have them all the time anymore. So Tuesday, we'll get right to it. Tuesday is my off day, right? I don't, I don't typically have a, a class that day. Um, although I've added some private sessions on those days. So I get up later, right? My Monday, Wednesday, Friday alarm goes off at 4 a.m. So I'm up and running and, and, and going about the house at 4.15. On a Tuesday and Thursday, when I don't have any, any private sessions, I'm up at about 7 a.m., right? So that means that my, my window, my fasting window, uh, which is broken up into three parts, right? Sleep, 
right? And then uh, ketones, uh, a ketone supplement, keto OS, and water, and then bulletproof coffee. So those are the three components of my my quasi fast, my my no sugar, no carbohydrate fast. Okay, so on the days I don't train and don't have my classes, the the sleep portion of that three part window is longer, which makes the whole the whole thing a little bit easier, right? If you can sleep through uh, more of that uh, fasting window, it's easier to not give in the food, obviously. So I get up around 7 a.m. on those days if there's no class, right? No private session. Uh, at which point in time, I'll still do the same first thing I do on any day, and that is have some water, 20 to 24 ounces of water, right? Right away. Uh, and then I'll follow, follow that up with ketones, right? Keto OS. Again, the main reason is to give your body an immediate fuel source so that, number one, you have energy and your brain can think. Your body's going to re- rely on on a energy source of some kind, either glucose or ketones. So your body, as you get better at this, will produce more ketones overnight while you're fasting. But in the very beginning, and even as you go through it, giving your body additional ketones to allow you to fast longer is of great benefit, and it helps you tremendously. So water right away, ketones right away, 7 a.m., 7 a.m., 7.15 time frame, all right? Again, whether it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that initial jolt of ketones is going to take me out for, or, or could take me out for several hours, right? The ketones you get in your body through this exogenous ketone source will take you two, three, four, five hours out, right? So at the very least, I'll take that right away and I won't have anything else for another hour or two, right? So 7 a.m., ketones and water. Around 8.30 or 9 is when I'll start my bulletproof coffee. So just like with my Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, when I'm up earlier and I have my big block of classes, I'll do the initial jolt of ketones first. Then I'll do my bulletproof coffee for you know an hour or so later and then for several hours, right? And the reason being, again, behind those two back-to-back uh, fuel sources is to give my body ketones and, they, and then give it dietary fat, Right, XCT oil in the bulletproof coffee provide or MCT oil provides your body a medium chain medium chain triglyceride. Gives your body a a fat source that it can quickly convert to energy, right? And it teaches your body to use fat for fuel first dietary and then you know along this process eventually body fat for fuel. So I do that every day whether it's a training day or an off day, I'll do this this back-to-back uh, infusion of fat or ketones for fuel. First, exogenous ketones, 7 a.m. on this day, 7.15 or so. And then right away, or an hour and a half later, I'll do my bulletproof coffee, which gives my body more dietary fat that it can quickly convert into fuel, okay? So about 8.30, I'll begin drinking my bulletproof coffee, okay? Same as I do on my on my training days, just a little bit later, right? So now, again, just like with the other days, this bulletproof coffee can take me out another several hours before my body will require, physiologically require food, right? And once you train your body to turn off, or your brain to turn off all the cues that make you think it's hungry, you'll realize, I mean, it's amazing how far these two fuel sources can take your body out before you need any kind of food, so what I try to do, again, the, the, the reason behind the training we do on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays is to put your body into a position for fat burning, right? So for some of you who don't do exogenous ketones, you, you need some fuel for training, right? For training your body to break down muscle tissue and then rebuild muscle, which is in the long term is your biggest asset. Your biggest asset toward fat loss is muscle. Having a body that that requires more fuel, more energy per minute is going to help you get through glucose and glycogen levels faster, 
right, to get to the fat stores more quickly. So the more, the, the, the quicker your body runs through fuel, the better off you are. So we need to make sure that our training days are number one, uh, scheduled, right? And we treat them with importance, right? Because we're trying to build a long-term asset, a machine that will burn fuel for us 24 seven, okay? And so if you're not doing an exogenous ketone and you're trying to reduce the number of carbohydrates you intake or, or, or the amount you intake, you have to be cognizant and mindful of the fact that you need to have good workouts. So around your workouts, you need to have some fuel, right? Some some carbohydrates or ketones to give your body what it needs to, to power through great workouts, to break down muscle tissue, to rebuild body, a body that will help you long-term wise, right? So what that means is you have, to, in, in many cases, those who are not on this exogenous ketone tip like I am, need their body fueled, which is okay, right? So, but when you fuel your body, you need to make sure you do it in a manner that gives you an opportunity to work out hard, but then get rid of it, right? So remember, I, I talked about it before, the, the three reasons to, or the three objectives for every workout we do, especially if you're, if you're time compressed. So you have three or four opportunities a week, like I do, to work out. You wanna make sure every workout accomplishes three objectives objectives build muscle right extend the metabolic window right make your make your body burn fuel for longer than just an hour you're working out and then lastly you want to get rid of or deplete your glucose levels and glycogen levels right so if we do that correctly if we do all that correctly then the day afterwards is when our bodies are in position to burn fat so this, this, this theory, this thought that you burn fat while you work out is, for the most part, incorrect, right? Because the working out part is to put your body in position to burn fat, right? You're not trying to burn the fat in the workout. Now, you can do some steady-state cardio on your days off once your body's depleted of, of glucose and glycogen, but the, the, the thought or the idea that you're burning fat when you're working out is false, okay? So we're trying to, we're trying to build muscle uh, for which we need some glucose to have energy. But at the end of the workout, we're hopeful that we'll, we'll have worked through all that fuel to the point that the next day our body is empty of glucose and glycogen. And then we can get into fat burning stores, right? Or, or fat burning. Right, so if we did all that on Monday, then Tuesday we can just prolong our fast, right, via the ketones, uh, via the bulletproof coffee, right, putting no more uh, glucose fuel into our body, allowing our body to continue to deplete glucose if it has any left, and then our body will convert into this fat oxidizing, fat burning machine which is what we want on a Tuesday, right? So if we do that right, then, then, we, then we're fasting, you know, and, and our bodies aren't requiring as much fuel. We're not working out, we're not going for a run, and so our bodies don't need fuel. And in fact, if we try to, to overdo it, which many people do, and our body does not have enough time to convert fat into energy, then sometimes what, ha what will happen is your body will resort to using amino acids and or protein that it would have used for more useful things like building muscle and or if it's really in a, in a catabolic or panicked, panicked state, it will rob muscle for fuel. So when you've done your work on a Monday, then you want to let your body do its work and oxidize fat and give it time to do that without rushing it and trying to force it, in which case it will react negatively and oftentimes take fuel from the wrong places, all right? So 7 a.m. water and ketones, okay? 8.30 uh, to at least noon, I'll do bulletproof coffee. If I'm home or in a, in a place, say I was working in an office, in a place where I could refuel with coffee, I'll double up and get more bulletproof coffee. Right? Again, trying to extend the time at which I'm giving no, my body no glucose, right? No glucose, right? While the body continues 
to burn through glucose. I'm not giving it any more, right? So hopefully this is putting my body closer and closer, if not already in, to fat burning, okay? Allow my body to convert fat into energy, okay? So I'll do this. Again, I'll do the Bulletproof Coffee too until at least noon on my off days. And then after that, it becomes iffy because now I'm, I may begin to get hungry. Now I may be planning to go somewhere, a practice um, or something that will be require me to be out of the house for several hours. And, and I'm at risk for while I'm out getting hungry. So between... 12 and 3 is kind of the zone where I need to figure out what I'm going to do, all right? And so I'll do one of two things, right, at about 2 o'clock, right? Again, 8.30 to at least noon will carry me uh, with the Bulletproof coffee. If I'm home, I'll double up and go longer, right? Normally on a workout day, getting to 2 o'clock is pretty easy because I'm gone for much of the day and I work out. So my body isn't, and I'm so busy, I'm not even around the house until... Two o'clock, okay. If I'm home, I'm like many people. I'm I'm around a refrigerator. I'm around the stove. I'm you know I'm, I may I may be bored or stressed, and so I'm pulled, and and I have a craving and I'm drawn to possibly eating something. So if I'm not careful, I might eat something that I don't want to eat, i.e. carbohydrate. So what I'll do oftentimes is make sure that I that I enter into my body something. That's going to satiate me and turn off that, that trigger that might have me eat something bad. So I might eat some eggs. I might eat some salami or some sausage. Uh, or I'll make a protein shake, right, if I'm going to get to a point where I'm getting hungry. Uh, again, I'm trying to go as long as I can. Uh, but between 12 and 2 is when I'll have something protein-wise to stave off this this coming temptation possibly for carbohydrates. So at that time, it may be, uh, again, eggs is my go-to, uh, nuts are my go-to, um, meats, uh, salami is, is a, a turkey or bologna, uh, bacon, things of that nature are going to help me stay uh, or get satiated before I get hungry for carbohydrates, right? What I will often do is have something temporarily Right, if I have to, again, if I can go to two o'clock, I will. If I cannot, if I'm getting hungry, I'll have something small at about 12 or one, okay? Something like uh, eggs, again, or meat, uh, enough to kind of keep me from getting to a point where I'm really, really hungry, right? So that might happen around 12 or one, okay? If not, I'll go all the way till two o'clock or three o'clock when I pick my kids up from school. OK, um, at that point in time, I'm normally having to do something, either go to a, a client to train or go to my child's practice uh, or something where I'm out and about. So I have to get from that point from two o'clock or three o'clock until dinner time. Right. Somehow, some way. So what I would typically do is have a protein shake. Right. And that's gonna and that's gonna be mainly mainly protein, obviously. Uh, I'll, I'll put some almonds in it sometimes to make it thicker. I'll add some spinach or kale, frozen that I, that I keep 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 handy. Uh, and I'll have some uh, sugar-free ice cream that I'll add I'll add to it. Uh, and and then as my as my liquid base, I'll have either my leftover bulletproof coffee, which I chill, or almond milk or even two percent milk. Right. And so the idea is I make this and I'll sip that for an hour or so, half an hour to an hour. Right. At about three o'clock, between three and four. And that's going to take me out until my wife gets home and it's time for dinner and the kids are all done with, with activities. I'm done with my evening activities. Um, so usually, again, our, our dinner is late. We eat about 830 or nine most nights. So. I, I needed to get to that point. I needed to get from 12 or 1, maybe 2 o'clock until 8.30. And to pretend my body was going to be okay without taking any measures is ridiculous. So I have to make sure 
that I'm mindful of the fact that that window is too large for the bulletproof coffee and the ketones and possibly a small protein snack, right, like the salami or the eggs or whatever, to take me to or, or get me through. So if even if I had a snack at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, a protein snack, I still know that that window is too large. So I'm smart about it. I make sure that as I head out to get my kids from school or as I head out after getting them from school and going to practice, that I have this, this protein shake with me to give my body some fat, possibly from the Bulletproof coffee, some protein, some almonds, something that's thick, can satiate me and hold me over until I get back from where I'm at. Otherwise, I'm going to probably eat whatever I can. All right, whatever, you know, I'll drive through the gas station and pick something up. Or as soon as I get home from there, I'm going to eat whatever's in front of me. Um, and so you don't want to do that. You want to make sure your body has what it needs when it needs it, right? And and if it requires you to to plan ahead, then that's what you have to do, okay? And and I'll do that. I'll drink that as I go. And I'm usually pretty good. But even when I'm out like at my, at my kids' practice, or whatever I have on hand things that keep me satiated that are not going to add glucose to my system so I if people at my son's football practice will tell you I have nuts all the time with me I'll have a BCA drink prepared almost always to have with me right I don't I don't always finish it in fact I almost never finish it but I have that with me so that I'm out there and I'm not vulnerable to hunger I'm not vulnerable to temptation uh, as I sit by somebody who might have chips or something like that. I want to make sure that I'm prepared to defend against anything that might tempt me, right? And more importantly, give my body what it needs throughout this whole process on a burn day, right? This is a burn day, a day where I'm trying to let my body cut into the fat stores, okay? So if you look at it from a time standpoint, if my last meal on Monday night was about 10 o'clock, which is typical. I eat my last bit of food at about 10 o'clock, okay? So I go I go on a Tuesday, I'll get up at 7 and have my ketones, my, ke my ketones and my water, right? And then I have my bulletproof coffee at about 8.30, as I said, and that will take me out until at least noon, right? Which is when the, the decision is made on where, where to go from there. But let's say, worst case scenario, I'm taking it from 10 p.m. until noon, and that's my fasting window, right? So the fasting window, again, is three parts. It's sleep, which is the majority of it, or at least half of it, right? And then it's the water and ketones, and then it's bulletproof coffee. So those three pieces of the fasting window combined we're trying to get to at least 14 hours, 14 to 16, even 18 if we can, right? We're trying to get to a point where most days we're doing an eight-hour feeding window, right, and a 16-hour uh, fasting window if we can, at least 14, but hopefully 16. So that by itself, studies will studies will, will show tell you, if you Google it, that by itself will, will give you tremendous benefits, not only from a standpoint of how you look and feel, but health-wise, right? Long-term longevity uh, and your health. Your body has time to do the things that it, it has to do to repair and cleanse itself that it can't do if it's continuously digesting food. So we're trying to get to a point where our eating window is eight hours and our fasting window is 16 hours, right? But unlike most people, when they think of fasting, we're not trying to do it the hard, hard way. We're trying to do it with sleep, which is the hard way, right? No water, I'm sorry, no food at all. And then we're gonna try, we're trying to do it with ketones and water and then bulletproof coffee. So giving our body fuel, just not carbohydrate fuel, right? So I call it a quasi or a BTY better than yesterday fast. You know, I, I termed it, so I'm calling it that, right? It's a BTY fast. So we're trying to make sure that that window is as big as possible every day, right? If we do that continuously and consistently, you will see your body transform in ways you never thought possible, okay? So in, in this scenario, if I ate at 10 p.m., my last intake of food, uh, Monday night, right? 
And then I went to 7.30 to ke before I had my first ketones and water, or 7.15, sorry, I got up. I went to 8.30 and had my Bulletproof coffee. And then at the very earliest, noon, I might have a protein snack, right, if I'm getting hungry or I'm getting, you know, I, I feel as if I might get hungry. So at the worst case scenario, I go to at least 12 o'clock. So that's 10 p.m. to 12 p.m., right? That's 14 hours, right? Usually I go to 2 o'clock. That's the 16-hour window that I want, ideally. But even if I don't make it, 14 is, is, is good, okay? So if we get to 12 and have just salami or eggs, uh, no carbs, right? That still keeps our carb tank empty, Right? It gives our body some, some protein and, and amino acids right from the protein, which our body in, in extreme cases can convert back into glucose if it, if it has to, but it won't unless you push it. Then we're good to go, right? And now when we give our body the protein shake right, and the almonds, that takes us out even further right, until dinner time, right? until 8 o'clock, 8.30, until dinner time. All right. In the interim, if we have to give in to eating, we can have nuts, we can have hard-boiled eggs, we can have uh, jerky, beef jerky, turkey jerky, nuts. You know, these 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 things in this window between for me between two o'clock and eight thirty get me to the end point. Right. You're not trying to starve yourself. You're just trying to make sure your body has enough nutrients to get through the window that you're in. Right. And you're trying to do it in a way that moves you toward better habits. Right. So if you can do it, have a little bit and and over time, teach your body to require less and less fuel, especially less and less carbohydrate fuel. Then at the end of this journey, after a year, six months, whatever it is, your body will not need as much glucose. Like I would have never told anybody that I could go this long without eating the way I do now, you know, fasting, and and without having carbs um, as much as I do. I don't, I don't have hardly any carbs. And so it's it's a habit, right? It's building habits. It's building routine into doing what you're doing, okay? So now we've gone through almost a whole day, actually the whole day with no carbs, right? And we're at a point now where it's dinner time. It's 8.30, and what do you eat? Okay, so there's two theories here, right? The first theory is we're on an off day. Our bodies are not burning fuel very much anymore. Um, but our body also does not have may, very many carbohydrates, if any, in it. So we want to burn the fat as long as we can, right? As soon as we have any carbohydrates, this switch that tells your body to oxidize fat gets turned off. So the longer we can have that switch on, the better off we are, right? So the key to this whole fat loss thing, guys, is to turn this switch on as often as possible, right? And the switch is turned on by having your body be depleted of glucose, right? Whether it's through exercise and or through uh, reduced intake of, of glucose, right? Or both, ideally both, right? So the more often you turn this switch on, the better off you are. Okay. Now the key is number two is you want to make sure that 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 furnace or that switch is turned on for as long as you can each time to give your body time to convert and oxidize this fat into energy. Right. What many people do is they go low carb, so they're able to to get down to depletion relatively often, but they eat too often to allow their body time in each segment or each 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 uh, instance to burn fat, right? So you, you get you get to, to oxygen depletion at, at 12 o'clock, for example, noon, but then you eat a small piece of whole grain toast at three o'clock. So yes, it's not a lot in the whole day, but you're turning the switch off and on too often to give your body time to oxidize the fat. So the, the, the two keys to it are get your body depleted of glycogen and glucose as often as possible, and once you do that, have it last as long as possible, all right? So in this case, a Tuesday, I've gone the whole day without having any more intake into my body 
of glucose. And the harder I trained the previous day and the less I refueled with glucose, right? Again, there's some benefits to that, but let's say the less I refueled, then the faster I got to this depletion rate or depletion point where my body has no glycogen, now the, the longer I have that, that tank empty, the more I've asked my body to convert body fat into fuel. And I want that, right? I want that. So now we're at dinner time and I have one of two options. I can either allow my body to continue doing that, right? Or I can say, you know what? It's been long enough, right? If I do that window, you know, at this point it's, it's close to, you know, a 20 hour window of, of no uh, glycogen intake, right? And I can say, you know what? That's long enough. I'm going to give my body some glucose. Yes, it turns the switch off, but I've had it on for long enough to convert fat into energy. And if I do that long enough or often enough throughout the week, I'll be fine. But this will allow me to have some fuel for tomorrow's workout. So if I'm not doing ketones, like many people are not, which is fine, then tomorrow morning I need fuel for the workout. And if I train at 6 a.m., for example, I don't, but if I did... I wouldn't have time to get up and necessarily fuel my body for the workout. So I would go in there with no glycogen. I would have some ketones, hopefully, that my body produce, but maybe not enough to get through the workout. So what I can do, scenario one, is I can have some, some small amount of carbohydrates at my dinner time so that my body will have that glucose available to it tomorrow morning for the workout. Right? Or in my case, I take ketones. I don't need to do that, right? I might just do it just because I want to have some carbs, right? And I know the next day I'll be burning it off. So if 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 I feel like, okay, I've had this this switch turned on long enough, I'll turn it off and have a have some whole grain rice or have I don't know whole grain bread or a small sandwich, whatever. I'll have some carbs. If I know the next day I'm gonna burn through that, I'm fine with that. Right, So at that point, even though you should probably work toward having minimal carbs, if any, on your off days, there are scenarios by which it's okay or recommended to have a small amount of glucose, carbohydrates, at that dinner meal. Number one, to have it available for your morning workout if you're not going to have any ketones or your body's not producing enough ketones. Number two, if you're confident that you will burn through that, right? And in both cases, you feel like you've gone long enough uh, in this window where your body was oxidizing fat. And now you, you feel comfortable uh, turning the switch off and getting back to regular glucose or sugar burning, all right? So that's my schedule, guys. And so um, that's an off day, right? Wednesday, I'm back to my workout. So similar in the morning, right? Um, similar around noon time or two o'clock time. Uh, the difference is I, I allow more carbs on a, on a workout day. Uh, but again, to recap my Tuesday, uh, my off day, my burn day, if I've done my work on Monday and I put in the work and depleted, this works out perfectly, right? I sleep until seven. I get up. I have my ketones and my water, right? That takes me out for an hour and a half. Take my kids to school. I come back. I make bulletproof coffee for my wife and I, right? That gives me fat for fuel, satiates me, teach, teaches my body to burn dietary and then eventually body fat. I'll take that, that, that bulletproof coffee all the way out to at least noon, at least noon. If I feel I'm getting hungry and I'm just being tempted by the refrigerator or by whatever, I'll have some small dose of protein, right? Eggs salami, jerky, uh, nuts, things like that, right, to get me to about 2 o'clock, at which time I'll have a protein shake typically to get me through that window from 2.30 to 3 o'clock-ish until dinner time, right? I, I want to get through this window without being, um, being susceptible to temptation, right, without feeling like I want some of the chips that the person next to me has, or I want to go get gas, and all of a sudden I want to have a candy bar. So I want to make sure that I give my body fuel 
to turn these triggers off that might tempt me to eat some junk food, okay? Because the window's about four hours, right? Four, five, six hours, depending on what you're doing. For me, it's about five, six hours. So I make sure that I have something to get me through that. And then even with that, if I go somewhere, I want to make sure I have things to keep me uh, satiated and keep me full and give me fuel that is not glucose that in an emergency I can take in, like nuts, like jerky, like my BCAs, right? Those things keep me from having or from putting into my body uh, any excess glucose, all right? And then dinner time, um, I'm going to try, depending on where I'm at, I'm going to try to have no carbs. On this particular day, I had lettuce wraps with ham and soup, right? So very little carbs in that meal, if any, right? But again, if I was training the next day, early in the morning, and didn't have any ketones, I might have some glucose the night before to be prepared for a great workout. Or if I was craving something and I knew I would burn through it the next day and I knew that I had gone long enough in this window to burn fat and was ready to turn it off, then I could do that as well. So in this case, I, I did all protein, <coughs> excuse me, I did ham um, and lettuce wraps and soup, uh, but I could have had some carbs if I wanted to. All right, so hope that was helpful, guys. Um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, are they're all pretty much scheduled. You know, I kind of know what I'm doing, um, you know, for every day. Even even in times when I we have things going on, like my son's football games, my daughter's football games, you know, I know, you know, for a couple months at least, what our schedules are, and I try to make sure I plan my fitness and my nutrition around those schedules. All right. So I hope that was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, uh, please post them or ping me directly. Um, but yeah, ho hopefully this uh, shed some light as to how I how I eat, how I train, and how I pull them all together uh, to be successful. All right, guys. Until next time, this is Coach Bobby saying, "Have a wonderful day, uh, BTY, uh, better than yesterday." Take care. Bye.